if it is or if it ain't, it's going to come out. Good morning, everybody. It's your girl, Miracle Sims, and you're listening to God, Sex, and Love. Your daily dose of inspiration and juice. It is July the 19th, 2023, and today the topic is unveiling the the sacred (laughs) art of prayer. Good morning and happy Wednesday, everybody. I hope that you all had a wonderful day yesterday. Mine was just fine. Um, I felt like I was receiving a lot of spiritual meat yesterday. I had a conversation with Brother Leo. Um, y'all know that's the gentleman that I used to do the accountability um, show with, as well as um, amazing uh, faith-based um Gym is what he pretty much has. Gym, food prep, all of that. And so um, we had a long conversation yesterday, y'all. I was supposed to be on his show. (laughs) And we talked all this time before his show and then during the show and then after the show. So, um, But it was nice. It was nice to fellowship. It was nice to get that iron, sharpening iron and things of that nature. And um, you got a girl got spiritually fed. There's a lot of little things I felt like I, um, you know, was inspired to work on and things like that. But I appreciate the conversation. Um, so, honestly, that was the majority of the day. I mean, outside of that, um, that's all I had going on, really. But <clears throat> So, honestly, it's part of the inspiration for this conversation today because he um, said something that a previous guest said to me. Um, and he was talking about, like, when I, you know, when I pray, perhaps, oh, good morning, mama. Good morning. <laughs> Um, he was saying that maybe when I pray, um, you know, I can like get prayers from the Bible, like, and, and use those, um, you know, alongside of my prayers and whatnot. And there was another guest that I had recently that mentioned that as well. And I, I feel like that's one thing that I haven't necessarily done when it comes to prayer. Um, so I was thinking about that this morning and, um. I decided to go deeper with looking into prayer. And then as I did, um, you know, that's where the inspiration for today's topic came from. So let's get into it, y'all. The sacred art of prayer or unveil- unveiling the sacred art of prayer. Um, Let's see. Sorry, I was going to just take that off. So <clears throat> first verse that I felt led to share this morning is 1 Thessalonians 5 and 17. It says, pray without ceasing. Um, I guess the first sacred thing that I see in that this morning, at least what I was seeing as I was writing it down, is that we should always pray, y'all. I mean, you know, um, sometimes we think that it should be this uh, ceremonial thing or a ritual-like thing or whatever the case is, or maybe it should be that way or this way or whatever, but when you get into the Bible, what it's talking about is is always being in constant communication with the Lord. Um, you might not be in a situation where you can kneel, but you can be sitting down at your office desk and be praying, you know. Um, you can be you know, on the toilet praying, you know. Um, pray without ceasing. I mean, that it, when I read that this morning, when I was writing that down, that's what it, it means. You should always be in constant communication with God. Um, You know, if you feel led to kneel or lay down or whatever it is, I mean, there's nothing wrong with any of that either. But um, I think when it comes to, again, us us thinking that it has to be done a certain way or whatever, um, I think that takes away from being in constant communication because you can't do it a certain way at all times, you know. And so just something to think about. I mean, we're talking about, you know, the art of prayer, right, or prayer uh, in a biblical way. And when I looked up biblical, uh, prayer this morning, these, this is one of the first verses that stood out to me, pray without ceasing. 
Um, let me share with you guys the website. There it is, openbible.info. So, 1 Timothy 2 and 1, it says, First of all, then I urge that... Wait. I urge that supplications, prayers, and intercessions, and thanksgivings be made for all people. Um, this verse stood out to me this morning. I went a little bit deeper um, to to read more verses, sift it around, to get the context and whatnot. And this was pretty much the first verse in that section. Um, but what I received as I was writing it down this morning is that we should. This this doesn't exclude anybody. Like you know, um, the main thing that I've I guess what was resonating in my heart and mind this morning as I was writing down this verse is that God is no respecter of persons. Um, you know, it says that these the supplications, prayers, inter intercessions, thanksgivings be made for all people. And y'all, we talk about this all the time. All means all, you know, all means everybody, um, you know, rich and poor, you know, young and old, male, female, whatever your nationality is for you. And so, um, yeah, I mean, it was very interesting. I came across something, I think it might have been yesterday or the day before, but at some point I came across something that was kind of asking the question, well, why did God only reveal himself to a certain group of people, X, Y, and Z? Um, I guess kind of giving the impression that like, well, God, um, you know, what about the rest of the people in the world and stuff? Like, you know, what if they don't get a chance to hear the gospel or things of that nature? Now, I know when me and my husband had this conversation, I was telling him, I was like, look, I, I hear you about other, you know, religions and people that are raised other ways. And then you, you care. You're like, well, what about them? But my thing is, like, if you care about them, right, then you would be sharing the gospel with them. That, but that's a little bit of pulp. We might not like that this morning <laughs> um, or whatever. But sometimes, again, if there's something on your heart and mind that you feel passionate about, that's probably something you're supposed to be doing and a gap that you're supposed to be filling. Um, you know, we don't like to take that ownership, but I mean, when you look and see what happens in the Bible, as well as again, it, it's something that you're passionate about. It's something that you care about. It's something that's on your heart and mind. And so that might be a gap that you need to fill. Um, if you feel like, man, okay, there's a lot of people out here that they don't know the gospel and they, cause they was raised in a certain way, X, Y, Z, then get out here and start spreading the gospel with them individuals. Just saying. I mean, you know, if you care, right? If you truly love. <laughs> um, but anyway, <laughs> um, but anyway, just reiterating y'all that in, at the end of the day, prayer and everything like that is for everybody. Um, and yeah, you know, there's no respect to persons and everything like that. Let's keep going. John 15 and 7, it says, if you abide in me and my words abide in you Ask whatever you wish and it will be done for you. Um, again, you know, we can ask anything we want of God, you know, at the end of the day. Um, just as long as we understand that if it's not according to God's will, you're probably not going to get the answer. So, again, you can't be out here asking for somebody else's spouse. You can't be out here asking the Lord to give you X, Y, and Z. If it ain't his will, then just, I mean, you know, you can ask because <laughs> we got free will to do whatever. But... Don't be getting mad. You know what I mean? Like, it's clear in the word that at the end of the day, like, it got to be things according to his will, and according to the, the big picture and big purpose. Like, that's the one thing that I would say that um, I, I guess has changed my mindset or helped to change my mindset um, as I, I guess, get older or whatever the case is, or as I study more or whatever, is to, at the end of the day, understand that there's a bigger picture going on. Right. Like, I, I, of course, I see what's right in front of me and I'm dealing with what's in my own life and my own bubble and things of that nature. But, you know, when things aren't going my way and all this stuff, I, I have to understand that, OK, there's something else going on. There's a bigger picture. And, and maybe God, you know, wants things to go a certain way that it, I might not understand it in this moment, but years from now, it'll make sense. And so, um, again, I tell y'all all the time, the debacle, I did not understand why I was going through that stuff. That was some crazy stuff that I was going through. The best thing that came from it was the people that I met. And I, and, and I stand by that. I'll tell that testimony, I guess, the rest of my life. Um, and it was a down season for me, y'all. And it was a season where I was like, man, I, I don't I don't get it. Lord, you got me moving back to Georgia and all this different stuff, right? 
But on the flip side, I mean, I'm grateful for each and every one of those things now. I'm grateful for I'm grateful that I, I did the audition. You know, I'm grateful that I met the individuals I met. Uh, you know, um, I'm grateful that I, I moved. I'm grateful for all the things that, that didn't make any sense to me um, years ago. And so that's all I'm saying. At the end of the day, man, you know, um, you can ask whatever you wish from the Lord. And, and, uh, and it will be done, whatever it is. Um, but most likely the things that's going to be done is the things that are according to the will of God. Um, but anyway, let's keep going y'all. Um, first John three and 22, it says, and whatever we ask, we receive from him because we keep his commandments and do what pleases him. So again, if you're righteous, right, if you living like that, then yeah, most likely your, your prayers, you're going to see them prayers getting answered and things of that nature. Um, you know, and I'm not saying that you ain't going to see people thriving and and um, their prayers, quote unquote, seemingly to be answered if, if they walk in unrighteousness and evil and things like that. Of course, you see them. It looks like they winning. Right. Um, and there could be a lot of other things behind the scenes when it comes to those individuals. But as believers, right, if we're going to focus on being believers and things of that nature, um, yeah, just understanding that, again, standing in the will of God as well as keeping his commandments and doing what's pleasing him is going to open up the door uh, when it comes to prayer and, and your prayer is being answered. Um, we were talking about the other day that, you know, um, you are heard at the end of the day and, and this is how you're going to get heard um, by by walking in righteousness. You know, you know why it's perfect or nothing like that, but... Um, that is something that he honors, right? Um, I feel like, again, I feel like I'm a living testimony of that. I feel like God honored my prayers from the season where I was doing my best to, to do his will, his way. You know, um, I probably, you know, I, it's the book, y'all. It's my book. It's my book. <laughs> everything is in there. The cultivation period, a single Christian's journey, you know, um, and everything like that. But you know, I, I just hope these things encourage you, inspire. Am, am I unveiling some sacred uh, um, secrets here? Like, is these things that you didn't know? Um, I, on one hand, um, even as I was writing down the title this morning, I was like, well, honestly, there's nothing. I'm not saying anything. I don't think I'm saying anything that new. <laughs> um, but at the end of the day, I mean, it might be new to you, right? Whoever's listening to the sound of my voice, maybe you've never heard this before, right? And so, Hopefully, um, I'm encouraging you and inspiring you and, and unveiling some secrets for you to get an understanding of what prayer should look like, um, what the results will be when you are in right standing and things of that nature, y'all. Um, I got another verse to share and it's uh, Romans 12 and 12. It says, rejoice in hope, be patient in tribulation, be constant in prayer. Um yeah, this verse stood out to me this morning. I think, you know, it, it's a nice little reminder of of what, I guess, our life should look like. Um, you know, again, if you're in a constant communication with the Lord, you will, you'll be able to rejoice in hope, right? You'll have hope and you can rejoice in the hope. When you're going through the tribulations, you can be patient. And then, obviously, again, being constant in prayer is is just one of those things that will, it's like a key to the kingdom, like they say. And I mean, I guess, ultimately, that's the juice this morning. You guys can go deeper. Um, by all means, look up Bible verses on your own since it's around prayer. There's plenty to be said about prayer. Um, but if you guys just want to get, you know, some more detailed information, just go to uh, gotquestions.org. There's an article that I read this morning. It's called, What is the Proper Way to Pray? And um, go, start there, man. There's plenty of other things as well. But, I mean, you know, hopefully you're encouraged and inspired to go deeper uh, with this conversation. Like I said, that's the juice. And that's all I really got to say about that. Now, um, the Bible verse of today is Psalm 113 and 3. It says, from the rising of the sun unto the going down of the same, the Lord's name is to be praised. Friends, I hope you all enjoyed this juice this morning. Thank you so much for listening to God, Sex, and Love. You're the little of inspiration, the juice. I pray you guys can go forth and have a wonderful day. And I look forward to talking to you all tomorrow, if the Lord's will. Bye-bye. This has been brought to you in part by Anointed Touch Health, Fitness, and Beauty. Eat right and exercise daily. Walk with God. Run from the devil. 
1 John 2020, you have an anointing from the Holy One. Visit anointedtouch-hfb.com for more information.